KKHT wants you to meet three of the classiest guys in real estate. I am Chris Kelso, the maestro of mortgage. I am Rob Cook, the godfather of real estate. And I'm Joe Orsack, the king of credit swing. And together, we're the, the real, real estate, estate Rat Pack. Pack. Much like us, real estate right now is smoking hot. So whether it's buying, selling, or owning, you need to check out the Real Estate Rat Pack. They're here to take your calls and answer your questions live. Call now, one 800 808 548 and now the real estate rat pack good morning good morning, good morning. how is everybody this morning hopped up on coffee and ready to go <laughs> absolutely it's been you know it's been it's a beautiful morning this morning we got we got some rain earlier in the week and just beautiful day today i thought i was gonna wake up to storms you know my little smartphone which isn't so smart was saying it's gonna storm tomorrow and today what <laughs> yeah so. i know we got a cold front coming well i'll tell you what it's not storming it's beautiful inside we've got a great show planned for today we, we do. have I'm everything about new homes houston new homes going on and you know and, and it's a lot of fun we have some great individuals in the studio as well you know and it'll, it'll be a really good show today yeah well i'm very excited about this we got some uh, you got one of the icons in the building industry david powers is with us today and i believe that you were responsible for getting him here in fact i think you picked him up for technically sure. speaking yes i think literally speaking literally yes. picked him up <laughs> so he couldn't back out so <laughs> anyway uh welcome dave we're really excited about having you here we also have uh with us today matthew gertis who is a divisional vice president uh, i'm sorry I, I just demoted you divisional president for president. Perry homes and gayla gayton who is the lead of the top mark team from keller williams Welcome, though. So, Absolutely. Let's, well, you know, let's start off with David. You mentioned an icon. It's always important. I, I definitely agree. David, thanks a lot for being on board today. Thank you for inviting me, Chris. Oh, well, it's our pleasure. You know, let us know a little bit about what's going on with Homes by David Powers today. Well, really, uh, after the downturn in the market, we kind of took a different approach because we have to have a niche in the market. And one of the things I did during the downturn is went around and met with 55 different home buyers that I had built homes with over for the last 20 years, sat down at their breakfast table and said, if I were to build a new home for you today, what things would you like to see different? And if you look at all of our product lineups, they reflect those changes. Those changes would be like media rooms on the first floor, not on the second floor. There were 27 of the 55 that I'd built real nice medias on the second floor that all 27 of them said, build a media room on the first floor closer to the kitchen. Because after about six months of ownership, we got tired of running up and down the stairs. So that's one. <laughs> of they weren't going down to get food down there. That one makes the perfect sense. Did. The other is from a cultural standpoint, uh, parents with children want to have all of the entertainment areas on the first floor, not areas for children to entertain on the second floor, kind of in the bedroom zone where it broadens out. So they that was another change. Uh, in suite baths with every ba- bedroom, we have a separate bathroom for every bedroom because if you talk to the parents and you talk to the kids for the little bit of value that they end up spending to get that bathroom, they eliminate a lot of turf fights for who gets the mirror first. Uh, yeah, who gets the bathroom, right? <laughs> so, Mom, he's been in the bathroom too long. Get him out of there. <laughs> and then the other thing is really what we call uh, whole home pricing. And We used to have a much bigger design center as a part of our operation. We still have a pretty good size design center, but what we did is we listened to what the buyer said, and the buyer said, you know, when we came in to buy a home from you, we we agreed to a price, and then the sub- following week, one or the other of us, and sometimes both of us, would go in and we'd realize that we'd need to spend another eighty or ninety thousand to get your home the way we want to get it. So now we have what we call whole home pricing, where every thirty days we go back in and look at what the home buyers are selecting as their choices, and we and make that a standard feature. So when buyers come in, they really come in and purchase a home with all the wood flooring, the tile flooring, and everything inclusive, the travertine, whatever the case might be. And then when they go to the design center, it's more of a pick out the selection rather than pick out the selection and the price. So when they leave our office, very seldom do they spend any additional money from what they enter the, into the purchase agreement. So I kind of identified some of the things that people are wanting. I know a lot of people like in the outdoor kitchens and things like that. You're seeing a lot of that for, for their lifestyles. Big covered patios, outdoor kitchens, what we call courtyard homes, where you walk into a front courtyard as well as the back courtyard. In our Monteleone at Bellaterra, we have uh, five of those type of plans, and they're very, very popular. And for our listeners out there, tell them where Bellaterra is. Okay, if you were to go out the West Park Tollway, just beyond the 99, there's a roadway that goes to the south that's called Katie Gas and takes you right into the neighborhood. And it's a master plan of 1,866 acres that's doing very well. And t- what's the price point? Our price point in there is about 450 to 700. We are getting ready to open up a new lifestyle courtyard product that goes from about 310 to about 390. 
in about what size lot would somebody expect to get in that courtyard series? In the courtyard series in uh, Monteleone, the lot is 82 by 130 to 135 deep, and in the uh, lifestyle courtyard, they're 55s by 130. So where those be uh, zero lot line or patio home lots? Or? Well, they're not really. They're the way I come up with the lifestyle courtyard was way back at Lakes on Eldridge South. I developed a product in there, and it worked out very well. So we kind of retrieved those plans and did it again. But they have a normal side yard on each side, but you enter through a courtyard in the front. One of the things about courtyard homes that people don't realize that normally what you pay in air-conditioned space that you pay for up front if you're paying $100 a square foot is the foyer of the home. The courtyard home brings you more into the center of the floor plan, and it eliminates spending that money for the courtyard. So you typically are saving 200 to 250 square feet, so that's twenty five to $30,000. Wow. that you're saving that you would otherwise pay for in expense because most homes are priced based upon air-conditioned space. So if you look at an appraisal, it's going to reflect air-conditioned space, so many dollars per square foot. When you have a non-courtyard home, you have a couple 300 square feet of foyer that you're paying for that you just get to pay taxes on, clean, etc., and it doesn't give you the natural light that the courtyard yeah, has. Well, I, I like courtyard able. entries, and, uh, you know, one of the greatest things to do is go to New Orleans and sit in those courtyards and, you know, maybe, you know, sip on a little mimosa or something <laughs> like that. But courtyards have a very nice, intimate, outdoor, entertaining type of function. Well, yeah. and that's what I was going to say. It's the ability to walk in and be able to have sort of a built-in entertainment center as well, you know, an area that, you know, most of the time in a, in a home, you're going to congregate to the middle of the part of that home. So the, as you mentioned, that courtyard, you sort of walk in, you've got a nice little entertainment area and a nice little receiving area. You know, the other thing, David, that I think is really interesting is you also do a lot of build on your own lots. You've actually taken a lot of what you've do, done over the years and are doing right now and do build on your own lots as well. Is that correct? Yeah, well, it's like Gayla and I were talking about all during the downturn. The staff was limited with what you could afford. I took care of a lot of the warranty calls, so I've always went to all my closings. I think I went to... I'll vouch for that. I actually, <clears throat> he, he showed up for the closing I had with him. Still does today. I was, and I, was very, I was very blown away by that. And so given that, I've had a lot of people come back that owned a David Powers Homes. We're building one in Pearland right now where this is the fourth home that they've had with us. Wow. And uh, they finally decided to buy a lot because we didn't have a position down there. They would bought a lot, and we're building the home for them right now. So it's a lot of our previous home buyers that we sold over the year. We would have delivered a little over 3,000 homes over the years, and a lot of those people are coming back and purchasing the build on your lot. That's a great testimony. You know, it's something that I'm Joe marketing guy for our company, I, so I, I'm, I'm always focused on the customer experience. And you said two things that really kind of struck me from that sense of – going out and sitting down with your buyers to talk to them about what they would like to see in your product moving forward. And from a genuine connection standpoint, there, there's just so much value in that in creating an experience for the buyer that is powerful for, for them. But another thing that I thought was really interesting about the courtyard thing, uh, you know, even for myself as a homeowner and, and looking at the experience that I'm trying to create for my family, my wife and I, the time we spend together and all that sort of thing, the whole car courtyard idea um, where part of the, the experience of a home is that, that impression of walking in. The, the first impression you get is the statement you're making about your home. And so that's the, where the foyer has become such an expensive area of the house. It's a neat idea to me to take that and say, how can we approach it from a, a practical standpoint that makes a more cost-effective approach at still creating an, a, an impression or experience when, when you first touch that house? That was really kind of neat to me. Uh, and it, it's a very usable approach to creating that experience. I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of rambling on well, that. Thank was, you, Joe. It, I like that <laughs> yeah. idea. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Joe, one of the things you have to go do is you got to go see his model home. Yeah. And uh, you got to go see the model home at Lakes of Elaterra where it has that entry into a courtyard, even on their, their, their big home, their estate, their estate series right there. And let me tell you, it's absolutely amazing to walk into this courtyard that is not only a beautiful sitting area that you can sit down and enjoy with an outdoor a fireplace, etc. But it's a great way to go in. And literally, when you walk in, I, I'm a testament to this, you can look northeast, southwest, and see the home as well. Yeah. So it's really neat to be able to see the way that's been put together I, I, I and the just, functionality about it. I just snapped to why that became a relevant point in my head. Because as everybody here on the show knows, except for our guests, they're trying to get me to buy a new house. 
and my <laughs> wife is trying to get me to buy a new house. And she listens to every show. So every time we talk about new we're, houses. We're, we're working on them, Kim. Yes, we're working on them. He's acknowledging it yes. now at least, by so, the way. Uh, um, I, I'm picturing, that's why I just thought about it. I'm picturing the idea of the uh, the courtyard and all that sort of thing. And that would be something I'd be looking for in a, in a home. So that that's... that's well, Joe, come out, come out and see us, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Part of my philosophy always has been is that I only live in one home, every other one I build for somebody else, so I've always had a pretty close attachment to the home buyer. And it's amazing how how well directed your thoughts become mm-hmm. when you visit with the home buyer and how targeted your product becomes for the market you're trying to serve. Yeah. So yeah. Do you find it, part of the trends that people are not really buying a home but they're buying lifestyles now? Oh, We've yeah. talked about this quite a bit. Is that you know, this is where I'm gonna you know, it used to be people are, are using the home as a central place to, to sleep at night, but now everyone's coming back to the home, there's those huge entertainment areas and the, we see the trend is that they're looking for a lifestyle. And as a segue into the, the next question I had was about surround sound systems. are you including those with your builds where they're they putting this magnificent oh, surround on, sound yeah, yeah. big screen TVs? Yes, them, or? most definitely. The media rooms are all equipped. They're pre-wired as a standard feature, and then the people choose the media selection of equipment. Some of them have their own equipment, some of them add it. And in the great rooms, we all we have surround sound in those. Then we have speakers nearly in every every room except the secondary bedrooms, but the master bedroom, and they're all home run back to a center area where you can put a tuner in there and run the music through the home. The other thing, just a simple little thing that I learned from that is the flat screens. And Really, the buyers didn't tell me, but all of our homes are now flat screen comparable. So on the wall, 72 inches off the floor, we have a plug. You have a Smurf tube there that goes down to where the connection is so you can have your TV either in a, on a piece of furniture or you can put the flat screen up on the wall. Smurf tube. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I hadn't it's heard a, that term before, but that's for uh, run, running all your li- line wires. And stuff. I, I immediately gathered what that would be for, a smurf tube. <laughs> so so the, wi- the no, there's no wires exposed. The other thing uh, I well, do is... Well, that's why I meant you're running through that, through that all tube. My, all my front doors now are 3.6 wide. And the reason I went from 3.0 to 3.6, kind of a simple thing, is furniture is all designed around a three-foot opening. Appliances are designed around a three-foot opening. And after people live in a home for 10 years... It's amazing how those door jams get tore up uh, from yeah. people just going in and out with things. So now all my doors are three six wide to give them the ease of going in and out. Well, that's a that's something nice I just seen as I'd walk in and out of these homes, and you say, "Got to fix that." You know, well, what's your biggest challenge out there? I think probably today it, it varies in home building. You know, today it's probably as we talked a little bit ago. It's the source of labor, it's source of material availability, and things like that. Home site availability. But uh, those are good kind of problems they have. I'll take them any day of the week. Yeah, because we remember the past. And, I know, yeah. and, you, and you were building back in the 80s, too, so you, you've you survived two downturns, two right. major downturns that I'm aware of. So anyway, uh, Chris, you look like you're about to – you're on the precipice no, of no, saying something. No, you know, I, I'm absolutely fine. You know, it's, it's so much fun to sit here and talk because there's so many good things. I was, as you mentioned, you know, David's been around building a long time. And, you know, and, and he's truly one of the good individuals in the business and in the industry. If you're out there looking for a home, I strongly suggest go out there. If you're looking to build it on your own lot, if you're out there looking at the Bellaterra area, look up David. Go out there and just see the styles that he's building in his home. It's absolutely amazing. You know what's other? What, what else is amazing is how fast time flies on the first segment. We are up against a break right now, but Already. stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Why don't we? 